Uh, that, was probably, that was probably one of my greatest achievements. You could actually type it on uh, the internet, like EVA Air Sunshine Coast Marathon, which happened on yeah. Sunday. Uh, the, the tricky thing there was that there is a cutoff time of six hours, 30 minutes. And yeah. this was my first marathon. And everyone will tell you, and the books will tell you, you know, uh, that the experts should tell you that they should only do the marathon after having run for at least a year. And I did not do that because I started running, I think around January of this year. And I think that would generally apply as well to those who are younger and fit, but I'm old and overweight. And so my, my the, the tricky thing was, should I wait to, you know, do, do I wait for the time when I become more fit and lose weight? Or do I just, you know, jump in and, you know, start running? And I decided to just start running because if I waited for the time when I lose weight, it may never happen. So, and uh, uh, I, I did it. Six hours, 19 minutes. And um, the the more the most difficult part there, uh, they tell you, you know, you're going to hit the wall. And I was thinking, what, what is it really like? So I was very conscious of what was going on. And I think in the last 10 kilometers, so that's about at the 32 second, 32 kilometer mark, if, you know, I was just in pain. Like I didn't know yeah. if I should be running or I should be walking. If I ran, it was painful. If I walked, it was painful. <laughs> yeah, but I did it. Uh, I, oh, I no. went to the marathon saying, no matter what happens, I'm not going to quit. Even if I have to walk and or run on the footpath because of the cut of time. And, but, Everyone I talked to, I said, I am most likely going to be disqualified, you know, just so anyone doesn't have very high expectations, but I did it. So that was to me one of the, you know, uh, best achievements. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Now you got a time to beat. Yeah, but, uh, and the beauty of it is that I didn't really feel the bad effects of running afterwards. I'm okay, I didn't get injured. Uh, I know that a lot of people are probably in pain even now, and they probably wobble as they walk. I'm okay. So very happy with it. Okay, so thanks, uh, everyone, for coming. We've got 14 students, which is good. Uh, I have to go. Okay, GS Ledge. Okay, thank you, Summer. Okay, so thank you for joining uh, tonight's tutorial. As we said, uh, I'd like to spend the time talking about the use of generative AI for better student learning and outcomes. And what I sincerely feel, really feel, is that if students just learn how to use generative AI, well, they're, they're going to learn a lot more. But more importantly, if they ever end up having to do online assessments, uh, they're going to do really, really well. And so that's what I'm going to teach you to do. But when I, when I start talking about this, I'll begin by saying that I'm not here to teach you how to cheat. So I want to be clear, because I'm going to lose my job, you know, if I if uh, pe people think that I'm actually here to, to, to teach students how to cheat. I'm teaching students how to use generative AI in a very responsible and ethical manner. So that's my goal. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me if, you know, if the technology is out there and we don't use it. It, it would be such a waste because it's already there. Everyone's using it, so we should use it. Now, so let's begin by talking about how generative AI can help in student learning. So uh, I'll, I'll begin by saying that generative AI, such as ChatGPT and Google Gemini, and we're going to have a look at those in a short while, can be very important tools for learning, uh, mainly because they help you, for example, if, if, you, if you give it a problem, it can actually uh, suggest different sorts of answers. And but and, and this is the one of the something is uh, I think Richard has posted something. I can't see it, Richard, though. It's it's not clear. It's too small. Uh, one thing you really need to watch out. Oh, my score. Ah, OK, thank you. <laughs> OK, thanks for that. Um, one, one thing you need to watch out, though, is that Generative AI can hallucinate, and I'm going to teach you how to minimize that, because if you just give generative AI a question, there's a good chance that it, it may just invent an answer. Now, the, pro the, troubling, the troubling thing I've noticed as well is that even if you give it, the, give it the proper prompts, in other words, you give it very strong instructions on how to provide an answer, 
and in a sense provide the pro proper sources of information on which it should base its answers on, it can still get it wrong. I've noticed that. And so be very careful. It's not foolproof, okay? Be very, very careful. If you rely solely on, on uh, generative AI for answers, you're, you're, you're gonna end up uh, with a lot of grief. So the important thing here is you use generative AI on the understanding that you have some background knowledge. If you don't, and you're, you rely totally on AI, you're gonna have a massive problem, okay? So, but once you, you have some information, you have some knowledge about, uh, you know, about a particular subject, and then you make good use of generative AI, it, it can be a very important tool for, for learning. Uh, as I've also indicated, it can generate answers. And so if you give it a problem and it generates answers, you don't really rely on answers as your own, but you rely on the answers as a prompt, as a reference, as a way for you to think about, oh, so these are possible answers. And you can tell gener generative AI, oh, can you explain some more? You know, can you shorten your answer? Can you be more professional? Can you expand on this? It can do all of those for you, which is really beautiful. Oh, that's Donald Trump's uh, <laughs> famous, uh, famous word, beautiful. Okay, now, uh, I was about to say I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump, okay? Uh, and, uh, the other thing is it can uh, allow, uh, AI can allow you to play around with various potential answers. And it will even tell you, you know, you can even ask it, you know, uh, in what way might the, the law be invalid? And in what way might you argue that the law is actually valid? And so it can do both, which is really good. At the very bas basic level though, and this is at the very basic level, you should really use AI for proofreading and editing. And so this is the, this is the lowest level. That technology, about, uh, that technology about using artificial intelligence for proofreading and editing has been there for more than a decade now. I recall around 2009 or probably even earlier. Uh, before Grammarly, they, ha they had other tools uh, I think one of them was white smoke, but you know a lot of people, and you're probably familiar with, yeah, Grammarly. You're probably familiar with Grammarly. It was already teaching us how to proofread and edit, and then it will probably suggest ways of improving sentence structure. Those are important points, even at the basic level. Even if you don't use generative AI to uh, to suggest answers for you, you know the substantive aspect. If you use generative AI even for the purpose of improving your sentence structure, uh, the way you present arguments and for proofreading, editing, that will count a lot because the, the problem that a lot of markers and you know, lecturers often encounter is that it's very difficult to understand what the student is trying to say. It's probably clear in the mind of the student that you know, everything is clear, but when you read it, it's like, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just incomprehensible. Maybe because, in a sense, the student struggles with the rules of grammar, and it happens a lot. They, there, there are so many grammatical errors, and it just makes it difficult to understand what the student is saying. And the, the, other, the other point is that because of proofreading errors, spelling errors, and so on, you begin to wonder if there are so many errors in punctuation, in spelling, and so on alone, wouldn't you possibly think that there are probably a lot of errors in the substantive aspects of the answer as well. On the other hand, if a student takes the time to really make sure that what is written is readable and you know they're flawless in terms of the grammar and the spelling and so on, then you'd have to say, okay, so you know, this comes from a student who's who's really prepared well. So at a very at the lowest level, students should learn to use generative AI for proofreading and editing. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how it's done in a short while. Okay, uh, I'm looking at some of the comments here. Is AI be any better than Grammarly? Uh, I haven't really used Grammarly in decades because there was a time, or not really decades. Uh, I did try to use Grammarly again, but I felt Grammarly was not good. I felt like I, I wrote better than Grammarly. And so I just ignored it. But I would imagine that... Uh, I did notice with Grammarly, it'll take the legal ease. 
out of it. And I've got to, got to control it sometimes, otherwise it makes it too layman-like. And wow. there is particular ways. I've noticed with you guys, you, you know, coordinators in the textbooks, mm. certain choices of words. So I go, no, 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 it has a particular legalese context that way. I would think the Grammarly I tried using again about three years ago would, would pale in comparison to AI today because generative AI today, it's really good in terms of grammar. It's really good, okay? But again, I, I wanna warn you, be very careful about the substantive, substantive answers provided by generative AI, because even if you give it the proper prompts, it can be wrong, okay? so But I'm gonna show you that in a short while. As to Jocity, um, I haven't tried it, but I would suggest, if you're gonna be using Google Gemini anyway and ChatGPT, you might as well stick to ChatGPT and Google Gemini. Uh, and not used to studiosity anymore. Now, uh, th this is one of the important things as well. Generative AI, at least for law students and you know who are dealing with legal scenarios, can be very helpful in identifying the legal issue. That's it's it's really amazing. It helps pick up the legal issue for you, and so therefore. I don't know how, how if I should get there, but okay, let me let me go there because I've experienced myself. And that's why we're moving to a different kind of assessment later on. But let's assume, not in our setting, but let's assume that students somewhere in a different country are given an exam. And uh yeah, you know, law students. Uh, do we have permit? Yeah, yeah, certainly you can use this. I'm gonna post it on YouTube. So yeah, yes, Scott, yes, you can. So let's assume that there's a, you know, there are law students taking an online exam in a different university in another country. So let's, it's not CQU. So I'm just giving a scenario. And what the students do is they actually, uh, pick, you know, copy the entire question, put put it in uh, in Google Gemini, for example. And then it can ask Google Gemini, identify the legal issue. Google Gemini or ChatGPT would be very good in identifying the legal issue. So can you imagine that? It identifies it really well. And I'm, I'm gonna show it to you uh, later on. Uh, and as I will show later on, uh, the, one of the crucial points is that assuming that generative AI comes up with, uh, suggests a legal issue and you think it's actually correct because you kind of agree with the suggestion, for you not to be cheating, you need to make sure you rephrase it, you rewrite the legal issue. I mean, there are so many ways of rewriting it, right? You have got to use your own words. If all you do is copy and paste, uh, there's a good chance it, it can get picked up as having been generated, generated by AI. But if you rewrite it and use your own words, and how difficult can it be? You're, you're off in a, you know, you, you've, you're off on a very good footing. And you're likely to get 10 out of 10 for legal issue alone. And the problem often is that students struggle with identifying the legal issue. And as I have indicated again and again, if you don't know what the legal issue is, then you probably won't know what the legal relevant legal rules are or the legal principles. You're going to be off track because that's where you begin. Without knowing the legal issue, you don't even know what, what rules to talk about. But if you know the legal issue, then you can just focus on that in terms of articulating the rules. So the legal issue allows you to pinpoint the rules you need to talk about. It focuses attention on specific particular rules. So that's the beauty of identifying the legal issue. It's almost like you go to a doctor and you don't tell the doctor what the problem is. You know, it's going to be uh, out in the dark. But if you tell him, oh, I've got a problem with my heart, you know, it seems to be a problem with the heartbeat. Of course, in that case, the doctor already narrows the medical issue to the heart. You know what I mean? Or, or if you have a problem with the house uh, and uh, you, you try to bring in a, an electrician, if you don't even provide some idea to the electrician what seems to be the problem, what the symptoms are, he wouldn't know where to begin, or for that matter, a car mechanic. So I'd, having an, a, a legal issue that has been properly identified really uh, enables you to to provide proper legal advice, okay? So that, that's really crucial. And so that's the beauty of generative AI. It can assist assist uh, in identifying the legal issue and even structuring arguments for law scenarios. So these are the promises of generative AI and I've seen it. 
It is really, really good. And I would ask you to make good use of this because I'd be very happy to see a lot of students, you know, if everyone could pass, that would be good. But if a lot of people end up getting high distinctions and distinctions because they know how to use generative AI, then you, you've, you've ended up with the, the, the competencies and the skills that will be very helpful in your learning journey uh, to become lawyers. But more importantly, when you do become lawyers, you know that you're very confident in your ability to make use of current technologies today. It's like, you know, you, you look for a job and then you don't even know how to use Microsoft Word or how to use Microsoft PowerPoint. It's like, wh why would a law firm even hire you? You don't even know these basic technologies. And to us, Microsoft Word and, you know, Microsoft Excel are probably just like calculators, which were, you know, we were a lot of the older people like me were using long ago, but we don't really use calculators today. We probably use Microsoft Excel. And so Microsoft Word is there, but if you, you don't even know how to use Microsoft Word, no one's going to hire you. And if you don't know how to use generative AI, it's like, huh, how come you didn't even learn it? So we must learn how to use it. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm just so excited. Uh, hang on, I speak too fast. Okay, I'm going to slow down. Sometimes I just get so carried away. I speak too fast. Okay, I'll slow down. Now, before I, I we, we go to the good stuff, before we go to the good stuff, I need to begin with some uh, cautions, some warnings, to make sure that people don't perceive me as teaching students how to cheat. So I'm gonna have to, we're going to go through some boring parts. Uh, they, they're almost like disclaimers because I don't want to get into trouble, right? Okay, so be aware that Professor Stephen Colbrand uh, sent out about two or three weeks ago a take five on AI and chatbots. So just be aware. So I'm not I'm not going to go through that again because you have it there, but it's enough that I acknowledge that Professor Stephen Colbrand himself uh, recognizes the value of uh, chatbots or artificial intelligence. And he mentions, he indicates there that uh, it is incorrect to think that you no longer need to study law because you really do. You really just can't rely on chatbots or uh, generative AI. So, and then he, he warns us AI can hallucinate and, you know, make an error. So I'm not going to, but the crucial point there is prompt engineering. And I'm going to teach you how to do that in a short while. And I, I'll explain more what it is about, what prompt engineering is. Well, in a sense, prompt engineering is really all about providing prompts or instructions to AI. It's almost like before generative AI, you needed to be a computer programmer or computer soft, software developer to be able to, you know, provide instructions to computers and you need to do coding. You don't do that now because, because of generative AI, you use simple words, even if you're, the words you use or even the sentence structure you use is incorrect. AI will understand what it is you're trying to say and then execute based on your commands. In other words, prompt engineering is providing a set of commands, instructions, or prompts to the AI on what it should do. And you don't need coding for that. You don't need, you know, computer coding skills like, uh, what was I trying to learn before? I can't remember the program now, but I tried to, to get into it, but it was just so difficult. But now, generative, you can actually tell generative AI what to do using words. And we do that because of, you know, by by now, we're familiar with giving instructions to Siri or to Alexa, or what is it that Google uses? Because I don't use Google. Is it Alexa? Alexa for Google? What, what is it? Hey, Google. Oh, oh you just say, hey, hey Google. Google. Oh, okay, so you just say, oh, hey, oh, Google. Apple, oh, Apple's, hey, Apple's, hey, Siri. Oh, yeah, so for Apple, it's, hey, Siri. So it's, it's well, I think for, for it's, Microsoft, it's, it's like, like Atana. Yeah, yeah, it's simply like that. Hey Siri, hey Google. And so it's it's like that. Uh, by now, you know, generative AI is so good, you, you give it commands in words or sentences and it picks it up. Okay, now, um, the, the crucial part here uh, is that uh, Professor Stephen Colbrand is just, uh, you know, trying to raise the point that simply because generative AI is out there, doesn't mean that you don't need teachers. Like, you know, doesn't mean that because generative AI is there, teachers are no longer needed. Uh, I, I made a presentation about two years ago to a law, at a law conference, and they said, you know, it's the vanishing law teacher. That was even prior to generative AI. But would it really be the case that you don't need teachers anymore? 
And the thing is probably not, because you really can't rely on generative AI. And crucially, it, there's a difference, right, between you know this this online interaction with a with a with a real person as opposed to talking to a chatbot. So it's different. Uh, and the other thing, though, is that academic integrity will be rigorously enforced. So be very aware. Academic integrity will be rigorously enforced. So if there is evidence of cheating, uh, the university is probably going to investigate it. So chatbots will be used as a tool to help you learn, not as a, a tool to help you cheat. Uh, the other point is, before I ventured into this, I've already gotten the, you know, as I mentioned, I may have mentioned before, I've gotten the go-ahead from the Deputy Dean for Learning and Teaching of the School of Business and Law, Associate Professor Stephen, Co uh, no, Associate Professor Anthony Weaver, who said, you know, it's fine to do this. And I also reached out, as I mentioned, to the Deputy Dean for Learning and Teaching uh, of the School of Education and the Arts, Associate Professor Reina Zipf, who also said, you know, it's fine to be teaching this if the purpose is really to help students understand the use of generative AI and how to use it in a responsible and ethical manner. Okay, now, uh, yep, so, yeah, the thing is, chatbots and generative AI can be trained uh, in such a way that they may end up getting 100% in some forms of assessment, such as multiple, multiple choice exams. I'm not really sure, though, if that's really true, but, you know, it's, if that's a possibility. Okay, so we're clear about that. Let's talk about key integrity issues before we go to the good stuff. You must make sure that you use the, um, just checking with recording. You must make sure that you use the answers provided by generative AI only as a reference or as a tool or prompt for your answers. So is that clear? Even if you know that, even if you agree with what is being offered by generative AI to be the proper answer, you cannot just copy and paste your answer the answer and adopt it as your own. That is straightforward cheating. That is straightforward cheating and a breach of academic integrity. You must use whatever answer is there as a way of guiding you on what to be doing. It's almost like you've got a problem. You probably go to a psychologist, a counselor, or a friend, and the friend you know, suggests you do this. But at the end of the day, you use the suggestions of the counselor, of the psychologist, of your friend, uh, as a way of, you know, guiding your own actions, but you don't really follow everything that has been said. Does that even make sense? I'm not sure if that's the proper analogy, though. But, uh, you know, the point is, don't just, uh, you, you can only use the answers as uh, as a reference. Uh, and then, you, 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 what, what's the other important thing here is you really need your uh, critical thinking and analytical thinking, analytical skills, in the sense that, when generative AI gives you an answer, you still have to evaluate if the answer is actually correct. So what it means is if you don't have any background knowledge, you, have, you are not in a position at all to determine whether what the AI has told you is wrong or not. So can you imagine how dangerous that is to be fully reliant on what the generative AI is saying, uh, especially if it hallucinates or provides you with something that's really wrong? So be very careful. You really must study. So uh, generative AI is just there as a tool. Uh, and then crucially, as I mentioned, do not adopt the answer provided by generative AI as your answer. You use it as a guide. Okay. Uh, so never copy and paste the answers provided by generative AI as your own answer. You really need to write your answers using your own words. So if need be, rewrite what generative AI has suggested. How difficult can that be? I mean, if generative AI, so I'll give an example. You, you give a legal scenario to generative AI, and the legal scenario is probably based on a tutorial question or an exam question or an online assessment. In a few seconds, generative AI will suggest the answer. In a few seconds. If it were you, it will at least take you a few minutes, right, to figure out, oh, what's the, what's the legal issue here? What rules should I have to look for? That will take a while. Generative AI does it in a few seconds, probably in about five seconds. It spits out an answer, and the answer is likely to be correct if you know how to do you know, prompt engineering. So given the fact that generative AI has already helped you by uh, you know, cutting 
the amount of time you need to come up with an answer, the least you can do is probably to, um, you know, spend time re rewriting it, right? You're rewriting the answers. Now, the other point is you must properly reference your own answers with appropriate case law or statutory provision. You must properly reference it. So in other words, cite uh, for constitutional law, cite these uh, the provisions of the constitution, which you think are relevant and cite the appropriate case law. Any questions so far? All good? Now, okay, so final warning before we, final warning before we go to the good stuff, okay? So I'm really providing all of these warnings because uh, uh, Associate Professor Anthony Weber uh, really uh, suggested that I, co I come up with the guardrails and the guidelines so that's why I'm going through all of these warnings before we go, we go to the good stuff. Be aware of and comply with university policies on cheating and academic integrity. You must study and not rely on generative AI. And be aware that generative AI can hallucinate and even invent false or misleading answers. Now from Scott, is there any requirement to note that we use AI in the preparation of the assessment? There is no requirement, but uh, I would encourage you to actually indicate that you have used AI. Uh, there's really no way for me. Oh, well, I we do have a sense if of knowing when you've used generative AI. We do know because it's just too good to be true, right? You say, what? This is coming from a first year student. This is flawless, better than my own answer. So we have a sense. You might as well just tell us you're using generative AI. And if you do that, I'd be very happy because I would say, ah, at least, you know, stu my students are learning how to use generative AI. So I would appreciate you doing that. Uh, it's not a mark against you. Uh, it doesn't matter to me, you know, one way or the other, whether you use generative AI, but to me, if you use it, I'm just so pleased because it's there <laughs> and you're not using it. So no, no, certainly you won't be penalized for it. I'd probably say, I'd love you for it, for using it. Yeah, it's like good on you. Now, if you don't want to use it, you're, you're the old fashioned, you know, the old fashioned guy or old fashioned lady, not a problem, right? Okay, from Malcolm, very subjective test on students' work, not the objectives. Mm, yeah, yeah, ah, uh, hang on. It's a very subjective test on students. Uh, oh, okay, hang on. It's a very subjective. Yeah, I had a, yeah, what, I, had what a uh, I had a friend over, he does uh, some units from engineering okay. in his 70s, he, and he got some result back and he said it was too good and he reported it. And I thought, that's very subjective. I mean, might have done it, but uh, you need the proof. We oh. have a presumption of innocence in this country, I thought. Yeah. That, well, that, that was... The, uh... the, the other reason really why I decided to get into this and just teach students how to use it was that... I'm not sure if this is public knowledge, but in, in a college of... I'm sure if I'm, I'll mention it, but I just heard, okay, from somewhere that uh, there, so I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's in our university or in our college, but I heard in the grapevine that uh, there were three cases of uh, allegations of cheating uh, and that because the answers were too good, the, the lecturer assumed that or suspected that generative AI has been, had been used. So he, re he made a report, he made, you know, uh, to, the, to some part of the university, not necessarily ours, and they couldn't establish that it was generative AI, you know, that it, artificial intelligence was used. And this happened only last term. And it's like, yeah, uh, it's, it's re really difficult. So, it, I mean, turn it in is there, but how can you tell, right? So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not cheating. It's a tough one. If, if, you're, if you're using it in the right way, I don't think it's cheating. Everyone uses it, so we should. Okay, any questions so far? Now, these are some of the prompts. Oh, okay, so let's go to the beautiful part. Uh, okay, so let's go to the beautiful part. Okay, hang on. Now, where are... So I'm going to go to the internet now, and we're actually going to use... Um, Oh, that's my problem. So we're actually going to use Google Gemini. 
So stop share. I'll go to the internet now and we'll do the good part. Okay. So this is Google Gemini. Now I'm trying to use Chat GPT. That's my problem with Chat GPT. It become it's becoming so popular. It's difficult to get in. See, it's still loading. I can't go in. So uh, I've tried to get into Chat GPT. I can't. Ah. Oh. Wait, could I? Oh, good. So that's the thing about Chat. Everyone knows Chat GPT. They're into it. Uh, it's actually, well, you could get it for free. Oh, that, that's good. So, ah, well done. I was trying to get into this for 30 minutes ago. They couldn't get in. So there's Chat GPT. There's Google Gemini. And they're free. I haven't paid anything. Okay. So I'll give you an example. The way we're going to do this is we're going to... Let's let's begin with the basic stuff, okay? Uh, so I'm probably I'm probably skip that part about showing you how to use ChatGPT and Google Gemini to programmer, or look for spelling because that's too basic. You prob we probably don't need to do that. We're gonna go to the good stuff, and that's about how to uh, use ChatGPT or Google Gemini to provide an answer. What we're going to do is to, to do this, OK? So I'll give you an example. This is one of the discussion questions in, uh, uh, no, no, it, it won't do that. So the, the thing about Google Gemini is that if you just copy and paste from a word, you know, if you copy text from a word file and just paste it on Google Gemini, it won't allow it because it sees it as an image. So what I often do is I, I go there and I put it on the, you know, in the browser and then I copy and cut it and put it back in. So that becomes text. So if you, if you copy the text from Microsoft Word and put it straight on Google Gemini, it won't allow it. It won't recognize, it won't read it. So you need to put it in the browser there, put everything there like I did. So like there, then con in my case, it's command A because I'm using a Mac and then uh, command X, so I cut it and then I just pasted it there. Okay, so look, so we're, we're not going to the good stuff. Uh, hopefully you can see it. So that's one of the questions that we looked at. So it says the government passed the Business Liability Act requiring certain types of businesses to get mandatory business liability insurance. Oh, my, my English is even wrong. I didn't know this. Eh? It also required. Oh, that's the other thing. If you see, like there, it's it's clearly an, uh, 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 an error. It is also required. Then you know that the person, or at least you can think, that this problem was written by a human being because AI will not have this kind of error. So I wrote this. So you can see I did notice that. It also required... So I wrote that problem because if it's generative AI, it will never have that kind of problem. So it's a, it also required insurance companies that wish to engage in the business of providing business liability insurance to secure a license and pay a license fee based on 2% of the projected sales revenues for each fiscal year. And then license fee adjustments are to be made three months after the end of each fiscal year. XYZ Insurance Limited seeks to, well, it should have been XYZ insurance PTY limited. So again, you know it's written by a human being because of the glaring error there. XYZ Insurance Proprietor Limited seeks to challenge the law. On what ground can a challenge be made and advise the company and whether its legal challenge is likely to prosper? So when you look at that, you need to figure out, you know, if you had a tutorial problem like this or you had a, an exam question like this, you begin to wonder what exactly is the legal issue, right? And so, so that that's the thing. Um, is it about is it the about uh, the Commonwealth Parliament uh, passing a law that is uh, you know with uh, uh, that is exclusively uh, meant to be within the power of the states to legislate on? Uh, that that's one of the questions. Or is this about taxation? Because if it is about taxation, then we recall uh, there, there should, there, there's a rule 
against tacking. And so if it's about taxation, then the law on taxation can only be about taxation. Is that about it? So we don't really know. Now, have a look. If you will notice here, the, I'm just copying and pasting from the tutorial problem we had. I did indicate what parliament were talking about. So if you just give this to generative AI, it has no idea, is this about Australia? Could it be some other country? Although it knows Canada, well, does Canada have a parliament? It's a commonwealth, I think, is it in Canada? I, I don't know, I'm not sure. But it, it's just so broad, okay? So let's see if what it does, okay. Aha, uh -huh. so can you see the beauty there? It's, it gives you an idea that these are the possible challenges. Corporations, ah, it's not Chinese. It talks about corporations' power, interstate trade and commerce. Oh, see, it's picking it up. This is about Australia. Implied freedom of trade and commerce, acquisition of property on just terms. Uh, that, that's kind of far off, right? Inconsistency with administrative law grounds. So, so that's the thing. It's kind of all over the place. It's kind of all over the place. Now let's try to compare it to ChatGPT. Let's see what ChatGPT does, okay? Which is better? Ah, wow, okay. It may, it imposes a tax. Aha. Uh -huh. Which might be unconstitutional if the fee imposed by the act is considered a tax rather than a legitimate. Oh, this is even better, ChatGPT. I didn't even provide prompts. Look at that. And this is for free. Wow. Can you see how good it is? It's amazing, right? Okay. Now, what I really need you to do is this. Uh, because, for example, Google Gemini, it's all over the place, right? What's important is... There's another, there's another important thing you need to do here. And what I'd like you to do is this. So for example, this is now where we're going to use the prompt. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, this is an example of a prompt, okay. So here, the prompt is, ah, okay, it won't allow it. It looks, it sees an image, so I'm gonna bring it there. So the prompt is just a command. So I said, this is the prompt. This is prompt engineering now. Provide an answer to this legal scenario using the IRAC format. So I'm telling it, you need to use IRAC format, issue rule, application, and conclusion based on Australian constitutional law. That's one of the prompts. So you, you're giving it, you, you're guiding it, right? So uh, here, I'm going to copy that. And what I often do is I use a colon and then can you see that I'm using quotes just to make sure that Google Gemini is able to make a uh, determine that these are my instructions or my prompts, and this is the scenario of what I want you to look at. So that's one of the first prompts. Use the IRAC format, and we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Ah, so it's now giving you an issue. See, does the Commonwealth Parliament have the constitutional power to enact the Business Liability Insurance Act? Uh, to mm, it's not good. It's a bad legal issue. Nah, bad. I, I don't like it. But it gives you a sense, right? But the, the way it formulates the legal issue, it's connecting the facts to what it senses to be the law. Uh, in fact, if you go to chat GPT, at the very beginning, it already talked about whether it's imposing a tax. See, let's try chat GPT this. Uh, let's try chat GPT this time just to see, you know, the difference. And I'll, I'll teach you more tricks though in a short while. Okay, same problem, we're using ChatGPT. Oh, see, much, much better. Can you see what it does? Constitutes an unconstitutional tax. Uh, I'm not happy with the way it's phrase. You don't say the tax is unconstitutional. But, you know, you get a sense what the legal issue is, right? And then it talks about the rule. See? 
between a tax and a fee for service. Oh, beautiful. See, it's already there. Application. In this case, wow. Can you imagine? It's already there. I mean, even if you just rewrote the words, chances are you can at least get a credit. You know what I mean? If you, have, if you had a sense of whether, if you had an idea that this is likely to be correct, and all you did was to, you know, to, to put in very, very minimal and very, very modest effort, and all you did was kind of, uh, kind of, you know, just rewrite it, and that didn't really put in your intellectual, your own ideas. You're gonna, you're going to get away with a credit at least, maybe even a distinction. Uh, did you get that? Can you see the value? We're not even there yet, right? Now, uh, I'll, I'll teach you more tricks in a short while, and then if you if you compare that, so the the problem they are uh, where are we now? Uh, uh, no, I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with with um, not happy with uh, Google Gemini. So you're gonna again if you use Google Gemini and Chat GPT, you get a better sense, right? But uh, I I like the one from I like the one from Chat GPT better. Hang on, man, it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I could I could cry. It's like what? It's really it's really great. Now, okay. I'll, I'll I'll give you a few tricks before we go to the you know in, into into uh, more prompts. Let's look at this. the The problem here uh, is that what's a word count there? That's probably about a hundred words. And let's assume, remember, you you're required to provide uh, an answer of about five hundred words per question, right? Uh, let's assume this is an actual exam question, like it's a midterm assessment question. Let's assume. And so the, the, the assumption is a student will come up with uh, an answer comprising about 500 words. And so therefore, this, this is kind of insufficient. It's only, what, less than 100 words? So that's not good. That's not going to be enough. So, so we're, we're not even there yet. I'm just gonna, going to teach you a trick. So what, what here is that you give it another prompt, like, like ah, and uh, this is the beauty of uh, Google Gemini, by the way, in a short class, I'll show you. But you could, you could do this, like expand on this rule, expand and elaborate on this rule. So that's a prompt, okay? So all I did was to copy the rule, which is there. I put it there, right? Because I said, ah, uh, it's not enough. So I want it to elaborate, explain. Let's see how it, what it, it does. Ah. It's, it's it's more elaborate now. Can you see the difference there? I did that prompt, just elaborate, and all of a sudden, can you see the beauty there? Now, not, not so far. We haven't even provided any references yet, right? We're going to get there. But, you know, uh, it's an expanded rule. And so... What I'd probably do is because I'm not really I'm not really keen on looking at bullet points being used. So you'll probably say, rewrite this as full paragraphs and sentences. Do not use bullet points. Okay, so let's see what it does. Again, you know, using prompts. So because I'm not keen on using bullet points, I, I don't like to see them. I, I see I want to see uh, paragraphs, full full, full paragraphs. Look at that. Wow. Can you see it? That's high distinction. That's a high distinction answer. Yeah, can you see it? That's high distinction. Okay. Now let's do this again. So uh we're not we're not we're not there yet, right? I haven't I haven't taught you a lot. We're just we're just for the moment, we're just focusing on the, um, the the easy prompts. So here, we'll do it again. Provide, and this is where you have to be very careful. 
provide uh, references based on high court decisions. Okay, Pre provide references to the following based on high court, by, based on, to be sure, indicate Australian high court decisions. Let's see how good it is, okay? We'll see. And this is where you need to be very careful, right? Okay, I'm not teaching you how to cheat, right? Okay, hang on. Uh, okay. Uh, mm. Oh, wow. So it's, oh, wow, those are the correct cases there. Can you see what it does? But again, I need to warn you that although this the, the cases are correct here, it could hallucinate. So just be very careful. I'm going to teach you how to find a way where it doesn't hallucinate. Okay, so what we're going to do here, I'm going to ask, yeah, yeah, those are those are real cases. They're actually correct. But don't ju just because it got it correctly today, now, doesn't mean it's always correct. In this case, it, it happens to be correct. So what you need to do here is, okay, so provide, uh, an, how do you call it? Provide an expanded discussion of the rule and cite the relevant case law based on Australian High Court decisions. Uh, write in full sentences and paragraphs. Uh, do not use bullet points or uh, numbers or numberings, whatever. Just use numbers. We'll see what happens. Okay. Oh my goodness, look at that answer. Wow. That's perfect. Huh. That's high distinction. Look at that. Okay, now. Okay, uh, it, it's showing off now. So Jack GPT is showing off. I said expanded and it's it's trying to say it's a professor. So I'll say, okay, uh, can you just shorten it a bit? That's too long. Okay, so I'll say shorten the above uh, discussion of the rules and limit it to about, I don't know, how many words is that? 200 words. So we'll see how it goes. Wow, can you look? Wow. Oh, but that's too short. So you're gonna have to keep on playing around, right? But it gives you a good idea. Yes? Okay, clear? So I'm gonna teach you something now. Uh, let's move on to Google Gemini. I'm just gonna show you something. Let's see what Google Gemini has done. So I like, mm, there's, I often like, I play, well, I don't really use ChatGPT often, but there's there's a feature in ChatGPT that isn't there in Google Gemini, and this is crucial, right? So uh, this is what I would do. Uh, hang on, I'm trying to open a file here. Oops, not there. Give me a sec. Oh, where's the file now? Hang on. Just need to open a file. Where's the file? Okay, I think you got it. Okay, good. Okay. So this is so remember I said that the, the problem with Chat GPT or Google Gem or yeah, Google Gemini is that it can hallucinate. So I so here, provide an answer. I'll go back to this. Okay, so I said provide an answer, right? So I'm gonna copy and paste it. Okay. Provide an answer to this legal scenario using the IRA format. So we saw that. This is what's important now. You have a sense that this is about the, po the, the power of the, you know that the legal issue is all about the power of the Commonwealth Parliament to pass a law uh, concerning taxation. And you need to know if it's taxation, there can be no tacking. In other words, the tax law can only be about taxation. 
but if this were not a tax but a license fee, then it's permissible to you know have other provisions other than taxation. So you know that. So what you can do then, because you already know what the legal issue is, and this is the, this is the trick. This is the trick. Okay, give me a second. Uh, okay, give me a second because I'm trying. I'm gonna do something. Just give me a second. I don't know to what extent Google Gemini will do this. Okay. So what I've done is, so this is where the, the trick is. I've actually copied parts of the study guide. Yes, parts of the study guide, the relevant ones on taxation. And that's what I've put there, I'll cut it and put it here and then provide an uh, use the following information as uh, uh, as a guide in providing an answer so i'm added i'm i'm add, adding another prompt so what i did was to just add something from the study guide so what i've actually done is I'm trying to limit the possibility that Google Gemini will hallucinate because so by adding you have to I'm saying give me an answer but you need to base it on the information I'm giving you do you know what I mean so instead of Google Gemini or generative AI going to the web or whatever its sources are to look for the information some of it to be wrong and then hallucinate what I'm saying give me an answer but you can only give me your answer based on the information I'm giving you. So it, you've narrowed down, you know, what, what it can, you know, the, the, what it can say as part of the answer. So what happens next? So if you do that, what happens? It's taking a while, let's see. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Does the license fee impose, so it's now identified the issue. Does the license fee impose insurance companies by the business liability insurance that constitute the tax? Uh, I, I still don't know. It's not that I don't like the legal issue. It's not a good legal issue that's formulated. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, not happy with it. So what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, so this is one of the, the other thing. If you... Oh, it's using hand side. Okay, so that's a good website. Look at the bottom here. Can you see these? It says modify response. Can you see it? At the very bottom, once it provides an answer. If you click on that, it says shorter, longer, more casual, more professional. I'll probably click on longer. Oops, not there. So I'll click on longer. Come on. It's not good. Did I actually click on longer there? Longer. Ah, oh, okay. Mm. Mm. Not happy with that. So let's use chat GPT though. Let's choose chat GPT. It's better. I don't know why. Um, Google Gemini has given me good answers. So can you see how important it is? So in relation to the point about limiting the possibility of Google Gem Gemini or ChatGPT hallucinating, provide the prompt by you know providing the source of information on which it will base its answers. You can use the study guide. You can actually use the textbook if you have a copy of the online guide. Clear so far? Yes. Now, I'll show you another thing. Uh, let, let's go back to that point. And this is where the difference is between Google Gemini and ChatGPT. So remember, uh, I said this, uh, use the following information as guide in providing an answer. So I'll, I'll go back to that. What I'm going to do is to try to, I've created a PDF. Where's my PDF now? 
Okay, it's here. So I'm going to drag a PDF. It's unsupported. What I've actually done was that instead of copying and paste, pasting some sections of the study guide, I actually wanted to, to just, you know, let it read the entire study guide. It won't allow it. Yes, it won't. But here's the trick. If I use chat GPT and I say, uh, provide, uh, use the following uh, information in the attached PDF as a guide, or you, you, it could even be wrong in grammar, in providing an answer. And what I'm going to do is to put the PDF. Ah, it allows it. ChatGPT allows an entire PDF to be placed there. So what ChatGPT would then do is to go through the entire PDF to come up with an answer. Can you imagine that? Let's see if it actually does the trick. Okay, so it's still all over the place. But you know what I mean? You get a sense, right? Of how, well, how, how helpful it can be? Uh, okay. Um, so, for example, here. I, I don't like it, right? So, in the above, in the above discussion of the rule, above discussion of the rule. So, this is where it's important you learn certain skills. Expand and discuss only that aspect about the taxation power of the Commonwealth Parliament and whether the tax law or whether the fee is a license fee. Okay, so I had that prompt. So we'll see what happens. See, so that's the important of uh, that's the important of knowing how to use prompts. See, can you can you? Imagine how beautiful that is. Ah, uh, I've hit the free limit, so I can't use it anymore. You need GPT-4, so it won't allow me. Uh, it will reset, though, at some point, so I can't use it anymore. I'm not paying. Okay. Um, clear. Can you see how uh, valuable it is so far? Yeah, um, there's another way. Well, there's another trick I often I often do, but it's easier here. You could actually, you could actually say that. So, for example, I'll give you another trick. So let's say we wanna we wanna go into uh, the engineer's case. Let's just assume. Let's just assume that that's important. So, so there. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is to copy, you know, that link and then say, uh, in providing the answer above, integrate uh, uh, the key rule from the engineer's case if it is applicable. If it is applicable, use this as a source. Um, there's say trade in commerce. So the other trick then is if you want sources and you want to make use of uh, cases, look for it on, from the internet if you think it's reliable, what's on the internet, and prompt chat GPT or Google Gemini to use it. Like well, like what I've done. Yeah. And you can say um 
explain the importance of the landmark case of the engineer's case uh, in relation to any constitutional issue about taxation, just as an example. Ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, very good. So your nephew has used it. Uh, uh, was a civil engineer used AI. Ah, okay. yeah, it's a yeah, it's a it's a government approved one. He tried uh -huh. it out. And he said he didn't like one of the solutions; too expensive. And he put like you did. He refined refined his okay. His you question. Think that, uh, and he came back with other cheaper options. He said okay, yeah, it's pretty pretty good. And it sounds like yeah. it's a subordinate it saves him writing it all out. Mm. Okay. So, any questions so far? Any any thoughts? Any comments? Have you learned something? Yeah? Are you going to use go. generative AI? Any comments? Can I hear any views, any thoughts from the class? Summer? Manjo? Um, hi. I'm yeah. just concerned about properly referencing. And um, so would we need to, when you put the information from the study guide in to get ideas would we then need to reference a study guide or would no 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 you, you never use the study guide as a reference okay never never ever not even the lectures or not even the tutorial sessions you always use the case law that is discussed okay. that is your reference all right yeah okay thank you mm. comments mal mal yeah just gonna i tried it the other week mm. To give me a case, a case summary or a um, mm. what do you call it, of a case you had to do for such an interpretation. Uh -huh. It was basically a constitutional one too, somewhat. Uh -huh. But it gave me some weird results. I was hoping you had to go through doing a case summary of a, of a lengthy case for us and see if it came up or gave you one. Yeah. Your knowledge of how to run run this thing, what it would come back with, because mine was using there were two females. It was to do with the. These two um, protesters that you might have known know about it, the um, mm. World World Youth Day in New South Wales, two thousand and eight, mm -hmm. the Pope was going to come out, and they were, see, two yeah, women were going to yeah. protest, uh. and they referred to the woman as a he in the police force, uh. and nothing like what the case was about. I thought, I see. Must be yeah, a, so, a user error on my part. Yeah. So just be careful that even though you're propping, you're, you're providing good prompts to generative AI it can still get it wrong. So you really have totally, to exercise totally. your judgment. I see you've run out of um, sessions with your access at the moment. With yeah, one of them. So I, was going, I was going to say, can you put this case through your, using your, your knowledge of how to use it, and you mm. get a decent case note out, out of this thing. Yeah. Mm. Okay, any questions before we end the tutorial? Uh, from Richard, I guess, to make it fair, all need to use certain approved AI, not the Iron Man type of AI for exam. Yeah. Uh, I can see by allowing that to use AI here, if some people can use commercial AI trained to Australian law, when comparing to other students, can only use ChatGPT in Gemini, the formula will have this proportional advantage. advantage. Okay, Britt, you've got a question. Uh, a question. Um, yeah, just about uploading the group assessment. Yeah. Um, so you only want one of yes. the people to upload? Yeah. Yep. So do you want both of our reflections on the same yes. thing? Or do you want to... Okay, so thing. just one person. Just one. So one document. If it's a group assessment, you've got the ref group yeah. reflective essay. You've got the essay and then the respective reflections of each student in one single document. Okay. And only one person uploads that? Only one person. Or we both own. Or both, yeah. Yeah, one. Okay. Just one. Just one, yes. Oh, hang on, hang just on. Just worry, because if I don't upload, I'm like freaking out that I'm going to. Yeah, I guess just one, I would imagine. Yeah. Or it doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll figure out a way. Okay. Yeah, I'll, find, I'll find out. Because okay. Ask ChatGPT how to huh? do that. Ask <laughs> ChatGPT. Mm. Okay. Um, Any questions or comments? Is it also Moodle? Sorry, that you upload it to? Yeah. I see something there. That, so we're uploading the assignment to Moodle. Yes. 
yeah, that's where yeah. you uh, whereabouts in the do we, ah, so is there an if you go to the very top of Moodle, I don't know how your, your Moodle looks like, but you know Moodle page, but there's an assignment. Can, yeah, there's the folder. assessment tab at the top. You can yeah, check okay. It there. Mm. Okay, cool. So uh, may I just know, do you plan on using generative AI for your midterm assessments? You plan to? I do. Mal, you were are you shaking your head? You're not gonna use it at all? No, oh, it's, it's just a small amount of words and um yeah, this uh, engineer's case is uh, very seminal in in Australian law, both in as we mentioned also in statutory interpretation. And as a, from there it was the first use of the literal rule, mm. statutory interpretation. So mm. I, I mean, I might give it a go, but I've just lost faith in it after getting that case note for the um, the other one did for mid to, uh, the first assessment, and I think it's. Uh, just a user error on my part, not requiring my my prompts properly, maybe. Hmm. But you seem quite keen on you're getting good results, but you're an experienced user. I've just used it the once quickly. Mm -hmm. Just to see what it was like and too many other yeah. things to do. You can also so use a, rab a rabbit hole. Yeah, you can also use generative AI to prepare for tutorials, like because I post the questions in advance, you generate answers. So you know you 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 are really ready. Uh, to really test it out with what your oh, response. Yeah. Mm. Okay, any questions? Anything else before we go? I was just going to say that last year when I prepared for all my exams, because they're all problem questions, I went through every scenario and answered every question uh -huh. beforehand. So like what we did, uh, I did that good. for everyone. For criminal law, I did very a practice good question like for murder yes yeah. it was murder drugs everything That's very good. same with chores so i think this will help me cut down my ah, for the exam uh, yeah yeah because maybe yeah. it could yeah uh, point me in the right direction quicker or something yeah so yeah i'll give it a go mm. okay on that is so when you're doing an invigilated exam what's the What's the consensus with utilizing chat GPT during an exam? I'm not sure it's permitted. Yeah. I don't think so. So you're probably not permitted. You cannot use chat GPT. Okay. I can't really have a definitive answer for yeah. that. You're probably better off asking Professor Stephen Colbrand. <laughs> okay. I just thought about it when Britt was talking and I thought, well, hang on. Yeah. That question hasn't been answered, so... But yeah. that's the thing, okay. right? Uh, and we're probably going to be moving away at some point towards the face-to-face -face, uh, exam in a testing center because of this problem. Uh, and the, the move for that is really driven by the, LAP, uh, the LPAB, the Law Practitioners Admissions Board. They're very concerned about cheating using generative AI if the assessments are online. But for the moment, right. uh, there's no, there's nothing that will prevent students from using ChatGPT, even in an invigilated take-home exam. I'm just not sure though if it's allowed. Mm. But if somebody does use it, who's going to know? That's the problem. I I think Chris, I do the same as what Britt does. Mm. Um, and um, I create a whole bunch of different scenarios so that mm -hmm. I have kind of a bit of a framework for different yeah. um, questions that yeah. I expect will be asked. Um, that certainly helped me out with contracts in particular last year. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, sorry, last term. Mm -hmm. And um, I think like Britt was saying, if you could use um, AI to help out with yeah. building that yeah. um, beforehand, so that's mm -hmm. like what you're going to, so you've got something handy that you can yeah. sort of grab, um, right. do all your checks on that mm -hmm. um, beforehand as mm -hmm. part of the process rather than having to write your own stuff that's true. Um, in that first instance and then be conscious not to copy paste in the actual exam or anything like that but you've got a framework there yes. that allows you to go okay so if I have this specific kind of problem mm. then these are the cases I use this is the argument that I use this is the, the issues the rules that sort yeah. of stuff that I would use for that Mm -hmm. So I, I 
I, I see that as being the benefit mm. um, for that kind of a scenario, even if you can't actually use it in the yep. moment during an exam. True. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions, comments? So we're all good? Okay. So I'll see everyone again on uh, Friday next week. And thanks for taking the time to join this session. Okay. So thanks, Can everyone. You I mean, huh? Isn't your wife having surgery Friday? Isn't your wife uh, not, not this time. Friday it's going to be, I think, the end of August. But we're still having our tutorial on Friday next week. We're having it on the it 16th. Is. Yeah. 16th and the 23rd. That's still happening. It's the 30th, which is reset to a different day. Okay, thanks everyone. See you soon. Bye. Thank Good you. Night. Bye. Thanks, Manager. You're welcome. Thank bye. you. Bye. bye.